If you want more time, money, freedom, and have a business that's not reliant on you, then you're in the right place. Each week, Mark Creeden, along with some of the very best business minds in the world, will take you through simple, practical steps you can take to create the business you always wanted. From his own practical experience, Mark will show you how to work less, make more, and get the business you always wanted, the one that you deserve. Now here's your host, one of Australia's most sought after business coaches, Mark Creeden. Welcome to uh, episode five of the Mastermind for Business podcast. Hey, in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about referrals because, you know, the easiest way to grow a business is to sell more to the people you're currently selling to. And I reckon the second easiest way is to get them to help you sell to people they know. So let's dive into the concept of referrals. And by the way, referrals is not about referral marketing and established joint ventures. We're going to talk about all of that in future episodes. We've got some great guests coming on and joining us about the power of joint ventures. But here, I'm just talking about how do you get the clients that you currently work with to send their family, friends, and people they know to do business with you. I reckon there's a really simple step-by-step process. I'm going to take you through it right now. Let's get into it. See, the biggest mistake that I think people make, and this might sound like almost ridiculously obvious, the biggest mistake that people make when it comes to getting referrals is they don't ask for them. I'm always amazed when I first talk to somebody and, and, and we talk about, oh, you know, where do you get most of your business from? Oh, no, I don't advertise a lot. It's all word of mouth. And, and you know, I get referrals. I'm like, Great. So let's talk about what sort of referrals, what percentage of your clients refer to you? And, you know, the, the answer might be, oh, you know, 10% easily. Great. That's fantastic. How many of your clients do you actually ask? Oh, no, I don't ask anybody. They almost wear it like a badge of honor, like they're super proud of it. No, I don't ask anybody. They just do it. How good's that? And the funny when I see the look on their face, when I go, yeah, that's fantastic. Imagine if you did ask them. Right, you're getting a 10% of your clients referring without you asking for it. Imagine if you did suddenly start asking for those referrals and you can sort of see this little light bulb come on. But I think it's, it's, it's more than that, right? And there's a four step process I think you have to follow in order to make those referrals happen. And I'm gonna take you through that four step process right now. By the way, it's super simple, easy, something that you can implement in your business straight away. And if you do that, you'll start to see the trickle of referrals that you're getting now turning into more of a flood of referrals. Let's look at those four steps. Step number one is you've got to pre-frame it. You have to pre-frame referrals. What do I mean by that? It's pretty simple. What most businesses do is they're quite passive in the way they go about asking referrals. You know, you'll see it on email footers or you'll see it on their website. Um, you know, you get the usual thing, you know, a referral is the best compliment we can have and it's on the, on the email footer. But the problem is that if, when you're dealing with your clients, if they don't know that they are going to be asked for a referral, then when, if, if it's really passive and you're just putting on an email footer or a newsletter or, you know, EDM um, on your website, whatever, the impact that that's gonna have is gonna be really small. So what you want to do is you wanna pre-frame it. And all that means is this, when you first start working with someone, imagine if you were to say to them at the very outset, by the way, referral is the best way that we grow our business. So if you're really happy with what we do for you, we would love you to refer your friends, your family, your colleagues, whatever it might be to us. Now you have pre-framed the process. So what happens is when you do go about asking them, we're gonna get onto how you do that in a second, but when you, when you do then eventually ask them, it's not a surprise, right? They're not surprised. And so if they're not surprised, they're almost expecting it. And if they expect it, they're far more likely to actually follow through with it. So number one is to pre-frame it. And how you do it is simply saying, at the outset, um, hey, listen, it's great that we're gonna work together. Just letting you know, part of our business model is that we ask for referrals and we'd love it if you're happy with what we're doing. If you're not happy, we'd love you to tell us and not just vote with your feet. But if you are happy, we'd love you to refer to us. So that's number one. There's a slight tweak on that. 
Imagine instead of just saying to them, hey, you know, if you love what we do, we'd love you to refer to us. Imagine if you clarified it and qualified it and narrowed it down even further. Imagine saying to a new client working with you, hey, listen, if you love what we're doing, we may ask you to refer. So as we go through our journey together, at some stage, we ask some of our clients, by the way, we don't ask all of them but we may ask you. Now, the reason you do that is because it then goes from being an expectation to a privilege, right? Because now you've gone from, yeah, they're expecting you to ask them and you're gonna ask them to, oh, they asked me. Because they said at the outset that they might ask me, they don't ask everybody, but they're asking me, so now I feel special. So it goes from just being you know, kind of just a matter of course to actually being a privilege. So number one is to pre-frame it and you can qualify that even further by saying, hey, we, you know, we don't ask everybody, we may ask you, we'd love it if, you know, if we do ask you, if you could refer to us. You could then qualify it just that one little step further by saying, we'd love it if we do ask you, if you could refer to someone just like you, because now you qualify what it is that you're looking for, right? We'd love to refer you to refer someone just like you. So step number one is to pre-frame it. Step number two is in the timing. I remember I used to get, I had this account years ago and I used to get um, Christmas cards and, and inside the Christmas card, it would say, uh, it didn't even have my name, but it would just say, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Um, our business thrives on referrals. If you know someone we can help, um, please refer them to us. And I used to go like, why would you put that into a Christmas card? Man, like it's giving and taking. It's like going, here's a Christmas card out of the goodness of our heart so that you can send us some referrals. It's giving and taking in the one. And so it loses all of its impact. By the way, it lost all of its impact because it wasn't handwritten or it didn't have my name on it. It was just a pro forma card. I remember saying to him, you should save the, the dollar or $2 of what was in postage and stop sending them. So you've got to work out the timing. The timing is vitally important. So let's look at this. Step number one is you've pre-framed it, right? And maybe you've qualified a little bit further. Maybe you've gone down into, um, yeah, you know, we're not gonna ask everybody. We may ask you. So there's this setting of this expectation of, I wonder whether they'll ask me. And then even that further qualification down into, you know, refer to somebody like you. The next thing is the timing. And the best time to ask for a referral is when your clients had a win. Right? So step number two is watching for the win. Step number two, watching for the win. Step number one, pre-frame the request. Step number two, watch for the win. And all I mean by that is, as you're working through the relationship with the client, if you have done something for them, which has given them a win, or you've delivered great service, or you've given them something that's really pleased them, you know, made them really happy, and they love what you're doing, that's the time you ask for the referral, right? You've got to watch for the win. What most businesses do is they send their invoice or they send a receipt and printed on the receipt is, you know, we'd love a referral from you or on the email that comes or, you know, on the PDF that comes, it's already on there that we'd love a referral. So what you've got to do is watch for the win. That's number two. Step number three. Step number three is to calibrate and celebrate. And all I mean by that is you've got to celebrate the win. So that's, you know, when they've had a win, there's an opportunity for you, for you to communicate with them. You know, pick up the phone, send an email, um, however, you know, go visit them, have a coffee, whatever it is, you, whatever the relationship is, depending on the product or service that you deliver. But this is the opportunity for you to celebrate the win. And so that's the celebration part. The calibration part is, hey, do you remember when we first started working together and I said that sometimes we ask some people to give us some referrals. Um, guess what? We've chosen you. If you know somebody who's just like you, we'd love you to refer them to us. Even better to, than that is to even narrow that down and qualify a little bit further. Remember, hey, if you know three people, two people, whatever it might be, put a number on it, quantify it. Because what will happen is this. If I said to one of my clients now, listen, you know, I'd love some referrals. Do you know somebody just like you who you could refer, who would benefit from working you know, in our mastermind program? They go, yeah, Mark, yeah, yeah, I do, I do it, yeah, sure. I'll send you some. And you know what? They probably won't. 
And it's not because they're lying to me and it's not because they don't want to help me. It's just because it's not a priority. And there's another reason that I'll go on when we talk about step number four, but it's not a priority for them. So if instead I can now give them some parameters, right? We're qualifying and quantifying the parameters. The qualifying, is it somebody like you? The quantifying is I love two people, three people. Hey, do you know three people you play golf with? Hey, do you know three people in your, in your mother's group? Whatever it might be, who you think would benefit from working with us, we'd love you to refer them to us. Now you are giving something that's both qualified and quantified and you're tapping into the privilege. So quick recap, step number one was we pre-frame it and again, we qualify it even further. Step number two is we watch for the win. And so we should be looking, we should be mapping out a journey. You should be mapping out a journey of your clients. Now, by the way, if you're sitting there going, oh yeah, but hang on, um, you know, I run, a, I run a car repair shop, right? Um, and, and so it's not a, really a long-term relationship. Somebody comes in, gets a service and off they go. So what often uh, those sorts of businesses will do is they'll print it on the receipt or they'll print it on the invoice or they'll email. Instead, imagine if you were to go, great, you know, they come in, they're happy. Hey, call them a couple of days later. How's your car running? Yeah, it's running really well. Thanks so much. Bingo, win. There it is right there. They, that is where you're watching for the win. So you actually need to map out what your client journey is. And then along that journey, you should be able to pinpoint times which would be a win. And if you if you watch out for that, that will then give you the opportunity to congratulate and calibrate. So if we use the car repair shop, really simple. Hey, just checking to see that everything's running along. Yeah, it's going really well, thank you. Fantastic. Hey, do you remember when you first came in to see us, I mentioned to you that sometimes we ask people if they're happy with uh, the work that we do for them to refer to us. I'd really love you to refer three people that you work with who, or that you live, that live close by you, three neighbors, whatever, three members of your family who you think would benefit from getting their car serviced by us. So step number three, you've got to celebrate the win and then you've got to calibrate it. Step number two, you've got to watch for the win, which means you've got to map out the client journey. Step number one, you've got to pre-frame it. Now, how does this all fit in? Then we're going to get to step number four. How it fits in is this. If they are pre-framed, they are not surprised. They're kind of expecting it, even though it might, have, it might sort of go out of their mind when you first say it. When you calibrate them and you bring them back to it, they'll remember, oh yeah, that's right, you did say that. So the, the extension of that is, is if you've set it up that it's a privilege, they'll feel a little bit, like just a little bit special, right? I, that's pretty cool. Like, I know you said you didn't invite everybody or you didn't ask everybody, but you've asked me. That's pretty cool. So that's the importance of the pre-framing, watching for the win, map out the client journey, celebrate and calibrate. Let's step, go to step number four. And I, I think if I look at all of the clients that we've worked with over the years who we've helped set up this very simple four-step four process, if, if I look at what they were doing and the biggest mistakes they were making, they were step number one and step number four. I don't know how many fingers I'm holding up there, but they were step number one and step number four. Step number one is the preframe. They just don't preframe it. So in other words, they're kind of, you know, it's, it's all very passive. It's not active. They're not putting it in events. Step number four is you have to make it easy for them. Because what will happen is, you know, you will ask people if, if they will refer, they will say yes. Uh, and they, you know, they mean it. They mean it with all their heart at the time they say it. But you know what, you know, they, they step away from you five minutes later, the phone rings and it's life on the line, right? You know, things just get in the way. Life gets in the way. They're super busy. So what you have to do is make it super simple. You have to do the heavy lifting and the hard work. And how you can do that is, is really easy. You can simply say, hey, do you remember that, uh, you know, I, I said, we asked some people, I'd love to ask you. Fantastic, right? You've picked the right time, you've pre-framed it, you've watched the win, you've celebrated the win, and now you've calibrated by asking them. That'd be great. Here's all I need you to do, please. I'm going to send you a text message that I'd ask you to forward on. I'm gonna send you an email, and all you have to do is copy and paste it, send it to five people, and copy me in. Now, the advantage of an email process, as opposed to something like a text or, um, or you know, a, a referral card, 
is with an email process, you have some control over it. So the reason I don't like referral cards, by the way, because you could say to somebody, oh great, if you'd love to refer, can you give them this card and the card will give them you know, a discount or something like that or a value add. It's quite passive. You don't know what's going. Those cards are out in, the, out in the ether and you don't really know what's happening with them. If you use an email instead and you said, to the, you said to your client, listen, I'd love you to refer. Can you send this email to five people and copy me in? Now you have some control over the process because now you can send an email and go, hey, George, I see that Mary sent you this email. Love to chat about how we can help you, right? Now you've got some control over it as opposed to a, a sort of a more passive that you have no control over like a referral card. Hey, if, if your business doesn't lend itself to the concept of those sorts of emails, then a referral card is fine, but there's two important components to it. One, there has to be some kind of a hook, something that, that attracts the person to, to want to do business with you, and also something that's in it for the person referring. The final point is this. There are your four steps, right? But quick recap. You've got to pre-frame it. You've got to watch for the win. You've got to celebrate and calibrate and then the fourth step is you're gonna make it super, 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 super simple for them, really easy for them to be able to do it. The final thing is, and maybe we should change it to a five-step process, but I think the final thing is you've gotta thank them. You have to thank the person referring, whether it's sending them a gift, whether it's giving them a call, whether it's shooting them an email, whether it's a card or a scratchy or whatever it might be, but you actually have to thank them because the more you thank them, the more likely they are to do it again. Hey, take those four steps, or five, as I've just said, apply them in your business tomorrow and watch it change the way you get referrals. My name's Mark Creedon. It's been great to have you on board uh, for the last 15 minutes or so in the Mastermind for Business podcast. I'll leave all the details of our Mastermind program. If you know someone in a service business or a professional practice who'd like to double their income, halve the amount of time they work in the business in 18 months or less, Send them to metropolemastermind.com.au. They can have a look at what we do. All the details will be in the show notes below. Hey, by the way, if you know someone in business and you've really liked what you've heard in this podcast, share the podcast with them and let's help them to build the business that they deserve, one that's a whole lot less reliant on them. It's Mark Creedon. Looking forward to catching up with you in the next episode.